Oh, doggy. It's Christmas. I'm a great friend. In the last two days, I just threw this together um, for a good buddy of mine. We're going to go visit in California. He's expressed an interest in cycle carts. And you know, anything that gets you in a cycle carter excited more than being in a cycle cart is somebody else wanting to build a cycle cart and wanting to help him out. So I built him a front axle here. Uh, it's an I-beam style, meant to imitate an I-beam, kind of. And I will speed through this. I'll just caveat up front, if you're building a cycle cart and you want a cool front axle, uh, just order one from Mark Parnell at Renegade. It'll be right. Um, I'll also caveat and uh, throw out kudos to Dennis Thomas and Steve Vinson because I don't know if I have any original ideas. So I, everything I say, I might have just learned from them. Um, but let me speed through what I did real, real quick. And there was a couple guys that came over from the New Mexico area, uh, Jay and Dale, and uh, we did we had a face to face meetup after chit chatting on Messenger. Uh, Jay has already got his first cycle cart mostly done uh 85 percent done he's putting skin on it now and it looks good um so we may have a, a get together in the future but i want to talk about this axle that i threw together real quick for my buddy jay and you know the reason I, I, I threw it together is one because i like building stuff uh but two this is a short suspense and you know, I couldn't really order anything uh, to, to carry with me. And I can order some parts and send to them later, but I wouldn't be able to carry something out there. So I, I threw this together. And I like wrenching in the shop and cutting and welding. I'm not any good at it. I like practicing. So we use the Azusa spindle brackets, which I don't even have good Azusa spindles, but I have an extra set of brackets. Um, Mark Parnell, you know, if you want good stuff, just go get stuff from Mark. He's got stuff with KPI in it and everything. He's He's got the best stuff, but... I mean, this, this is for uh, these uh, Azusa type spindles like that. They, they got no KPI and I'm no kingpin inclination. I uh, clamp these brackets to a straight piece of angle iron. I get them 29 inches apart, inside a bracket, inside a bracket. Um, I think Dennis Thomas's schematic from like 10 years ago for the Mono Wasp uh, had 30 or 30 and a half. Um, I think, but I think 29 gives a 30. 8 inch or 39 inch track I can't remember uh, do your research don't just make another front axle off of my stupid video make sure you do your research on that but then I have uh, 8 inches of drop from the top of the bracket to the top of this uh, axle and then the flat part of the axle must be at least 20 inches apart for a 18 inch uh, width for the uh, buggy seat springs um, de uh Steve Vincent's uh, schematic. I use his uh, plans for the frame as a starting point. I could probably use the probably use it for the all the way. I use it for a starting point for sure on the uh, on the uh, blitz and bends. But he's got 18 inches apart on the front, and that 18 inch frame rail width it works out really 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 well. So that's what you want these brackets to be. So I knock a a hole a center hole uh, in the axle, which you can't see right here. Um, I use Mark Parnell's method of he puts a, night, a button head bolt in there and he, he welds it much neater than that. <laughs> My booger welds. Um, goes through the bracket and then the spring, this piece of aluminum, I don't have any springs here. I've got a set of springs somewhere. i got to find them. Um, last set of springs I bought from Mark because I moved and I don't remember. The, I bought a set of those horse buggy seat springs, but then I ended up not using them. I ended up making transverse leaf spring on the front one. So they're packed away in a box somewhere in a container, and I don't know where they're at. They're probably in storage, actually, now that I think about it. So I have to go visit this, the storage uh, site. But anyways, the spring has a hole in it, um, center centered hole in it. So the spring gets held in place with this top bracket. Um, uh, you know, when you make this bracket, if you buy Mark stuff, you buy his axle and his spring, this is all done perfectly. Uh, if you're doing it, then you got to make sure, obviously, this distance is easy to figure out. So whatever your U-bolt, whatever your U-bolt width is, that's what that is. And it just the U-bolt just has to go around your axle. Um, and I don't want to know, I think i got one and three quarters here. Uh, I think, yeah, one and three quarters. But then this distance apart, these two holes, you got to be careful. They need to be one and a quarter inch width or whatever your buggy seat spring, whatever your spring is. That's the width that's inside of those two holes. 
uh, the inside of these holes need to be. And I think I gave myself just a little bit, like a sixteenth of an inch wiggle room um, on them. Uh, yeah. So that, that's what these are. And I'm, and I'm not even using that thick stuff. I think that's just uh, 120 wall stuff. Three sixteenths would probably be better. You can actually see it's bowed there a little bit. But it's a cycle cart. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. Trust me, I've, my my cycle carts have not been perfect, and I've gone some crazy speeds in them. <laughs> Forgiven for how how loose they're loosely they're put together. Okay, uh, they were, I've probably missed something there. Oh, I bend the axle. You know, if you don't have a you don't have a tubing bender. I got I got a tubing bender, so that, that helps me out a lot. But if you don't have a tubing bender, you can make this radius. You actually make the inside of the template an MDF, a half inch MDF. Uh, zip it down that uh, self tap screw that MDF to like your your uh, bench top, and then you can kerf relief cut the inside of this uh, tube to get it to bend around to get the bend to keep the shape. Once you get it to the shape, then you weld the the kerfs uh, shut, and then you go back and you uh, plate it with one. One eighth inch thick, one inch wide, or one and a quarter inch wide flat stock, and top and bottom, and it's only welded in the back here um, because I want it to look pretty, and that's not even really finished welded. I'm giving this to a buddy of mine; he can finish welding. I welded it good in the corners at the bends, um, so he can go back and finish welding it if he wants, or he can just grind all that smooth and then hit it with bottom filler, and I promise you, promise you, it'll be fine. The attaching this to your, your frame, I'd just make a simple little bracket uh, like that. Uh, these are 516, 516 by 18, uh, one, and, one and three quarters for uh, the front and whatever goes through, through there, but um, I actually use two inchers. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a two incher, I think, actually. I think it's a two incher, too. And these are two inchers, um, and that's made one inch wide to, to go through there, and then that's an extra piece of tubing. Um, to, so uh, you weld, you just knock a big hole in the tube, uh, so, and then you weld that tube in there so you don't crush it, you don't crush it and uh, bend the, uh, the side wall, or the wall of the tube when you're uh, tightening this up. Not that these have to be super tight anyways, they need to have movement actually, because so, they're gonna move. And then I did a little, little kicked it out a little bit there. Um, so it'll hold the axle, or I'm sorry, hold the, the spring in the back. And it is 25 inches from the front, 25 and a half inches back, three quarters of an inch up for that hole. That's what I use. You could probably play around with it and, and you know, adjust the ride height sli slightly if you wanted to, but that works really, really well and it gives a gives it plenty of room for movement, for spring, for spring movement. Um, one year, well, I got this out. This is a green. This is from my first Austin 7 uh, a few years ago. It was heavy as heck. This is, I don't know what it is, man. It's 0.10 sidewall. It is thick. It's like, it's almost 120 wall. It is heavy. Uh, that, that first one I made was a tank. So use the 06, the 065 or 063, whatever it is. You definitely use that stuff. But, uh, I like making the frame horns by cutting out like where this is dark. Do not cut this free. Just cut uh, that piece out, and I just marker it. It's not even done nicely. And then you and then you knock this piece up in there, and then seam weld it. And then you have a little gap you have to fill up. And then the same up here. Just cut out that that darkened portion, and then bend that part around, and it'll make a nice frame horn. A uh, more simpler way to do it is the Steve Vinson method. Is you just you do make the triangle, but you make it more straight. And I think he comes back to like the top of the wheel. It looks really clean uh, the way he does it. And it's a, a tr nice smooth uh, triangle and then bends that down and then welds that up. And it looks, it looks really good as well. And it's less cutting. Um, working on a 10 minute video here. I didn't want to talk for, for too long. I just wanted to uh, kind of recap what I did here for my good buddy. And, and it shows what you can do if, you, you know, if you're into doing it yourself. Oh, I didn't talk about caster or camber. I always mess this up. I don't, know, I don't know which one's which. The lean back. All right, so there is no lean out on these ones. These ones are, the, the wheels are straight up and down. So whatever they, whatever that one is, I totally should have looked this up before I started making a video. And I'll do it enough to know off the top of my head. So I think it's camber. 
is uh, that way. So these are, this is zero camber. It should be straight up and down. Um, if you want it to be goofy or if the inspiration car has it, give it a little bit of positive uh, camber with the wheel tips out at the top and it looks really, really good. So that's this one. I, I, I wish I'd have done more. I, only, I put one degree in it. Uh, so they only tip out one degree and I kind of wish I did two or th even three degrees. It really looks... It really looks goofy and funny. It just makes me giggle driving the thing. Um, and then caster, which is lean back, if I got that right, I've got six and a half or seven degrees. Now, when you put heat into metal, it, when I put heat into metal, it starts to move it. You can actually see the uh, the angle of the bracket compared to the angle of the uh, the axle there, and it's leaning back. It's supposed to be about working on seven degrees. And uh, so I, I figured that all out before I started zapping metal and, and putting into it. All right, I'm sure I missed something, but uh, Merry Christmas, Jay. This is for you um, out there in, uh, out there in uh, California. And let's see if we can't help you get a Mormon wasp built. <laughs>